Hello. Usually when adding authentication to a Ruby on Rails application, the first thought is device. And then on top of device, I sometimes add the authentication via social media providers like GitHub or Facebook login. Uh, but uh, sometimes I don't want to add device and it uh, really feels like device is uh, too much for a small Ruby on Rails application. So in this episode, we are going to add the uh, OmniAuth authentication. So a button to log in via GitHub. Uh, without adding device, just directly OmniAuth with GitHub. So here I have already a basic application where I have just two pages, a home page and a dashboard. The home page should be accessible for all users, whereas the dashboard should be available only for authenticated users. And we're going to add the um, OmniAuth uh, GitHub to this application. So we're going to start by adding uh, the gem OmniAuth uh, GitHub to the gem file, and we are going to also need uh, the gem Omni Isle Rails CSFR protection, otherwise uh, in the latest versions uh, it will not work. Now I'm going to run bundle. And after this we're going to add uh, our GitHub uh, API keys. So uh, in this example we're going to create an initializer, we'll name it github.rb, but it can also be something like omniauth.rb. So I'm going to go to initializes and create a file, let's say uh, github or we can just say OmniAuth if uh, you want to use another provider .rb and here we're going to add uh, the provider that is going to be GitHub in our case and we'll need to find a GitHub key and GitHub secret so we're going to create a GitHub application to do so I'm going to go to my GitHub profile and go to settings inside I'm going to go to developer settings OmniAuth apps, I'm going to create a new one, I can name it, uh, well, whatever. The homepage URL in localhost is going to be HTTP localhost 3000, and the authorization callback URL is going to be uh, the same, but slash auth github uh, callback. So registering application, I'm going to copy the client ID and paste it uh, here, and then I'm going to generate a client secret. Okay, I need to do the two-factor authentication, so I'm going to use my phone. Okay, here is the client secret. I'm going to copy it and paste it here. And now I need to add uh, a button to log uh, in via GitHub. So I'm going to go to the application and in the uh, navbar or in the layout file, I'm going to have a link to... Uh, sign in with github and the path is going to be slash auth slash github and omni auth uh, gem is going to recognize this uh, auth github path so if i click sign in with github we get the uh, undefined method uh, get uh, i think it should be actually a, a button tool so that it is a post request and i'm gonna go back now and click sign in with github and you see nothing happened, it says request phase initiated. So I will also need to say data turbo false. So data turbo false. And now I think it is going to work. So I'm going to click sign in with GitHub and you see I was redirected. Now an important thing for you to note, you have to have slash out on the beginning. Otherwise you're going to have another error. So, okay, I'm clicking authorize Vaishmarov and it is trying to redirect me to this path out GitHub callback with uh, an authentication code and we get an error. There is no root or the GitHub callback. So let's create this root. I'm going to just copy this uh, path that I have uh, added inside our GitHub application, this auth GitHub callback and uh, add it to the roots. So here I will say um, get all the GitHub callback to, and we're going to create a new controller and a new action. We'll name it sessions controller, and the action will be created. So when we successfully log in with the OmniAuth provider, with GitHub in this case, we're going to redirect the sessions controller create action to find or create the user. So let's uh, create this controller. I'll create a new file sessions controller.rb. And here we're going to, let's say, we'll copy this controller and we'll name it uh, sessions and we'll have just the create action let's uh, remove all the code that we don't need and let's put a binding here so bind binding.b okay now i'm going to go back to localhost and click sign in with github once again 
and you see I am in the binding, so I'm debugging this sessions control create action. Let's see what we have. We have a request, we have request.env, and inside this we have uh, uh, our omniauth data. So um, here it is, it is omniauth.auth. So we have a request env, omniauth.auth, and here is this uh, authentication hash that is being sent from uh, GitHub. We have the name of the provider that is GitHub, the unique ID of the user in GitHub, and inside the info we have the email. So we can uh, say that uh, uh, auth hash equals uh, request env omniauth.auth. Let's just copy it. And let's try to find the UID. So let's say althash.uid. Here it is. So we will say UID equals althash.uid. And we will also need the email. So uh, to get the email, we will say althash.info. Uh, and inside info, we will have uh, email. Like this. So email equals or hash info email and based on this data we should be able to create uh, or find a user but we still don't have a user model so we'll need to create our user model let me click continue and let's create a user model i will say rail generate model user a user is going to have the email and uid from github so the unique identifier from github Okay, we've created the user model. Let's go to the migration and we are going to explicitly say that uh, the email and the UID have to be present. So null, false. Okay, let's run the migration. Rails to be a migrate. Uh, relation users already exist. Maybe it's from some previous application. So I will say Rails to be drop to be grade to be migrate. Okay, let me go to the schema. We have just created the user's model. So email and UID. And now we're going to go to the user.rb user .rb, and ensure that the email and the UID is unique per user. So we will say validates email presence true and uniqueness true. And same for our UID. Okay. Now we are going to have this active record object of the user and in the sessions controller we can find or create a user. So it will say add user equals user dot find or create by uh, email will be this email and UID will be this UID. Let's see if this works. I'll put a binding here and uh, try to do this once again. So I'm going to go to the application localhost 3000 and click sign in with github we are in the binding let's uh, find the uid email and let's try to find or create the user so at user seems to have just been created we'll say user.count okay we have one user so we have created a user and now we need to uh, persist this uh, user in the session so we will say if uh, at user dot persisted just to make sure that we have uh, created the user then we're going to save his id in the session so we will say session user id equals at user dot id and then if the user has been uh, saved and if we have just set the current user in the session we are going to redirect to the dashboard path so redirect to dashboard path and if the user hasn't been uh, saved for some reason then we are going to redirect to the root path with uh, an alert for example so redirect to root uh, path and okay and this should be it for uh, setting the user id from the github uh, omniauth in the session so uh, let me stop the binding i will click continue I will uh, try to log in once again, so click and sign in.
and uh, I seem to have signed in. But let's ensure that we have the current user. So uh, I'll go back to the application. Let's uh, yeah file and try to get the current user. We'll say uh, session user ID. So you see it is present and the user ID is one. And now we can set a method for current user as we usually have with device and other authentication gems. So we are going to define the current user in the application uh, controller. And uh, we are going to do it like def current user will be uh, user defined by session uh, user ID if session user ID is present. And we're going to set it as a helper method uh, current user so that we can use it in the views. Let's see if this works. I'm going to try to get the current user in the application html.erb instead of the session user ID. And uh, it uh, didn't work. Let's try not find by it, but just user find. And it worked. We have some kind of object. Let's try to get the ID. It works. Email also works. Okay, so we have defined the current uh, user. I will actually say add current user and do some memorization and like this. So we've got the help method current user and uh, now let's uh, display this email only if uh, there is a current user. But uh, let's first make it so that we don't have a current user. So let's make it so that we can log out of the application. So we'll add a link to log out. We will say equals, uh, actually we'll make it not a link to, but a button to, because the method is going to be delete. So button to uh, log out. And the path will be log out path. And uh, the method will be delete. Yeah, we definitely need this kind of button. So uh, we'll go to our roots. And we will say delete uh, slash logout uh, to sessions delete. And now in the sessions controller, I'm going to create a delete action. So def delete. And here we're going to set the session user ID to nil. And redirect to the root path. So let's see if it works. We have had the log out button. I'm clicking log out and it says undefined method email. So we should be able to display this current user.email only if there is a current user. So let's uh, either add just some conditions if current user.present or as we have in gems like device, we will have a method uh, user signed in, for example, to check if there is a current user. So I will say uh, def user signed in and I will say current user and this is going to give me a boolean so if there is or isn't a current user let's uh, have the current user email only if the user is signed in so if user signed in then we have current user dot email let's see if it works okay undefined method user signed in uh, I thought it would work, so user signed in. Okay, maybe I should also uh, turn it into a helper method. And now it seems to be working. So now I'm going to click log out. And yeah, I am logged out and I don't have a current user. And uh, let's make these buttons conditional. So if the user is signed in, then we'll have the link to the dashboard. And if the user is not signed in, we'll have a link to log out. So uh, yeah, if the user is signed in, we'll have dashboard, current user email and log out. And uh, if the user is not signed in, then we'll have the sign in button. Yeah, this makes more sense. So home is available for everybody, dashboard, email and log out only for current user and sign in only for users that are not signed in. So again, I'm trying to sign in. 
And you see now I'm signed in, I have the link to the dashboard. But one more thing that is left to do, uh, disable access to the dashboard for not signed in users. So I would maybe create a separate method in the application controller uh, that would uh, that we can include in other controller actions to ensure authentication for a specific action. So I will say def require uh, authentication. And here I will say redirect to root path uh, unless user signed in. And we can also add some kind of alert uh, only for authorized users or requires author authentication. Yeah, so we can now require this requires authentication method in different parts of the application. For example, we can require it for static pages dashboard. Here I can add a before action requires authentication only dashboard. Let's see if it works. I am on the dashboard and it redirects me back to the root back to the root path. Again, I'm going to the dashboard and it redirects me to the root path. Now I'm signing in and I do have access to the dashboard and to other pages. So only signed in users have access to the dashboard. And yeah, that's about it. We have added the authentication without device. We have created our own user model that has just the email and the UID from the authentication provider. We have added a conditional NEPA with a few actions that are available only to a signed in user and uh, the sign in button that is available only for not signed in users. And we've added all these beautiful help methods to find the current user, to check if there is a current user and an action that we can include in different controllers to require authentication to access a specific action in the controller. So that's about it. Thanks for being with me. See you in the next one.